no longer employed by any bank, so what I say is purely my personal thoughts and views. Not all is what is read or is seen by journalists, I'm sure you know that. From a banker's perspective, if I am speaking with a banker's hat on, this is what we were taught 20, 30, 40 years ago. And in my view, the basic canons of lending will not have changed. It's about the people that you're working with, the character, the ability and the means of that business, those people. It's about the proposition itself. How are they actually going to repay? How are we going to repay this debt if we take that on? So what is the proposition? Think about the cost benefit, the risk return, both from your perspective, from a business perspective, but also from the banks. Banks, as you know, lend on fairly fine margins. If one £10,000 loan goes bust at a 2, 3, 4% margin, how much money do you have to lend to recruit, to recoup that loss? Multiply it by millions and you'll see the scale of the challenge. I don't think business people sometimes understand the simple mathematics of why banks have to be really controlling, working hard to understand businesses. And sometimes there's this mistrust which I feel is unnecessary. Let's just think about what's happened recently. Cost access flexibility drummed into people into bankers for many years. What has been happening is there's been this wall of capital. Some would say it's all the money coming from the oil from the Middle East, from the growth of China, from the growth of India, fueling currency and consumerism in Western economies. Whatever it is, access was not a major issue for the last decade. But the pendulum has swung absolutely the other way. What was the result of a supply and demand equation? Was that banks were competing big time. There was an oversupply, therefore terms and conditions and flexibility were bent, covenant light was coming in, things were much easier. Cost was being pushed down. Pushed down to levels where arguably the margins were too fine to be a sustainable business model. The writing was on the wall and people knew it. So. What I'd like to do now, as, as requested, is quickly run through the schemes. So I've tried to look at the national schemes. I've looked at one in particular that's hitting the headlines at the minute. And then I've just gone through other sources of finance, um, which, of course, are available, but not everybody knows about. So hopefully there's some useful reminders there. So the Enterprise Finance Guarantee Scheme. This is the one which is hitting the headlines. There was great bravadery when it was launched. But actually, if you read the fine print, it's for viable businesses. So there's the character, it's a viable business, it's an SME up to 25 million turnover. There's a whole debate about what is and what is not a viable business. The government and Business Link have very simply left those decisions quite rightly in the hands of the lending institutions. The second thing to note is the security issue. If the value of security, because property values have gone down, and there is a perceived write-down write value and the security is reduced, then this can be used to make sure that those businesses can keep going. Yes, they're viable, but the security is the issue. It's very similar to the small firm loan guarantee. It is a loan up to 75%, a guarantee up to 75%. And so if, if something goes bust, then what, what happens is the bank will collect as much money as it possibly can and whatever is left, the government is saying they will guarantee 75% of that so long as the total write-off does not exceed 9.75%. Small firm loan guarantee scheme defaults ran at 30, 30% plus in a previous recession. And that's why they were problematic because actually getting a return from them for the banks proved to be very difficult. So actually this might on the surface appear to be a wonderful scheme, but it is extremely challenging. I should also say, in terms of pricing, the margins are obviously much hard, more hardened, and the government are charging a 2% premium paid quarterly in advance, but it is a very specific tar target audience. In order to prove viability, you will need to produce information. The number of propositions I received with a complete information pack on day one were very few. Less than three, four, five percent. So actually proving the viability is not easy. And I also state that personal guarantees is quite an emotive issue. And there's quite a lot of debate about whether 
owner's houses are to be taken. Now actually quite a lot of lending is for secured bank lending. Then actually if they've got that, then actually if you move on to needing further funding, then this personal guarantee system, they're still going to ask for guarantees. But what they're not allowed to do is if you have not given your personal property, they can't ask for it. However, if it is found out that there are other assets which you had, which the bank did not secure and did not realise, then the government can rescind their guarantee. So, what's the views? The government, hurrah, it's wonderful. Look what we've done. We've chucked in 1.3 billion into the economy. The banks are saying, we want this to work. We will do all the right things. We'll work with our customers. They are emphasising viable and they say it got off to a reasonable start. The Federation of Small Business are taking a fairly aggressive stance. So now they are mystery shopping, the government, and they're checking that things are happening. So what I would say is I think the FSB are aggravating and they're acting as a catalyst to get things improving. And they're making sure that actually improvements are being made. So I just want to pick up on other schemes. The government have obviously said we'll shoulder half the risk. This is the other scheme, working capital scheme. Make sure, guys, you carry on lending in the corporate sector. Make sure that when we do this, we'll create a portfolio, we'll do a risk, risk analysis, and we'll shoulder half the risk at a premium. The other thing is the Capital for Enterprise Fund. It's, it's aimed at SMEs up to 50 million. Again, viable and sound businesses. It's quasi-equity, it's mezzanine and loan fund and, and equity funding. There is a regional transition loan fund. Uh, there's different ways of accessing funds. It's only 5 million here in Yorkshire, but it is around. Regional venture capital funds. They've been up and running, and now they're actually followed on with enterprise capital funds. They are well used. I sat on an advisory board myself, and I've seen a lot of really good businesses coming through there. But they are seeking commercial returns. They're there to prove to the private sector that this sector can still be profitable in the old 3i type way. Enterprise capital funds, here's a list of what is around. Mainly technology, early stage, mainly based on intellectual property sort of companies. But they are around and they are available. They're not used as much as they could be. And I think therein lies a more cultural problem for UK, which is we like to aim at the banks and talk about debt funding, but we don't like to give away equity. And it is a very different culture to other countries. And on that note, I'm happy to take any questions a little bit later. Thank you very much. <clears throat>